welcome to another edition of Lab Rats, eh? My name's Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And of course, as we shoot this, Canada is competing feverishly for Olympic gold, and they were halfway through the series. They already lost to America. Yeah, well, and you'll probably know uh, the results of all of this, so this, this bit of patriotism here old. might be for nothing. It might be a, a nice bit of foresight. But that's not the point. Today on the show, we're going to do another groundbreaking episode. Guess what? We're going to talk about Mac? Actually, we are. What? We're going to talk about the Mac. Believe it or not, I have purchased, I have shelled out cash for, a MacBook Pro, and that is going to become my primary machine. This doesn't sound like you. What's going on here? <laughs> you're, you're wearing hockey gear, you're buying a Mac. Gear, buying a, something is going on in my life, right? You would think. No, I'm serious. Like, I have kind of... Most kinda... people just buy a sports car, you know? Yeah, yes, right. <laughs> Midlife crisis. You know, hockey shirt and, and uh, MacBook Pro. So, no, but I decided I'm finally going to move to the Mac hardware. Now, I'm not going to become a smelly Apple fanboy like you. We're, in fact, I'm going to be the worst nightmare going for all Apple lovers because I'm going to tell it like it is. All right, I'm going to. So, but okay. today on the show, you're going to show me what I can expect moving from the world of Windows into the world of Mac. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I'm going to deal with all of that. All right, so a switcher's guide, basically. A switcher's guide to Mac. Uh, that's today on Lab Rats, eh? Okay, so I have to set the record straight here, though, because yes, I am buying a MacBook Pro, uh, but I am going to actually have a multi boot configuration. I'm going to put Windows 7 on it because I do love Windows 7 with some reservations. I'll talk a little bit about that a little later on mm -hmm. uh, and switch between the two operating systems. So actually, we'll do a future episode on how to do that, especially as I gain experience with this whole, whole thing. Yeah. But you're going to show me what to expect in terms of going from the Windows world into the Mac world, what I can expect, and you're going to give me a few tips, right? Yeah, you know, and this is something I did a while back. It was probably around 2004. So I've been with the Mac more or less uh, on and off for about six years. I've worked with Windows at the same time. So I'm not like completely out of the world of Windows. In fact, I'm running Windows on this machine as well, uh, the way you're planning to do. But uh, I know back when I first started working on the Mac on a full-time basis, there was real culture shock going from one to the other. And I found myself thinking, how do you do this? This, I don't know how this works. This is stupid. All of these sorts of things, which you're going to learn about in the next little bit. Well, and I have bought a MacBook for, for I had an iMac back in 2005, and I completely hated you know, the operating system. And I have a funny feeling that's going to continue. I might adjust to it as I go. But I really was just tired of Windows and the productivity thing around Windows. You know, mm -hmm. you know sort of, I installed a new antivirus product the other day. And it, dragged it down. Windows 7 is a great operating system relative to what's come before, mm -hmm. but it's driving me crazy, right? So I want a productivity boost here in this switch. I want to be able to go between the two different environments easily. You know, on the Apple side of the shop, you know, I run Apple TV. Mm -hmm. I run uh, an iPhone. I love both of those devices, so I kind of want that seamless integration there right. as well. Um, and and let's, let's face it, today the operating system really doesn't matter anymore, does it? Yeah, as things are moving to the cloud, you're right. spending less time with the OS itself. Well, all of my you know, work is going on with, with, with Google Docs and with Gmail and, mm -hmm. and, and on the internet, so it's really a browser experience for me. Right, and you can do that from your phone even, potentially. So let's, so let's start with like, I don't know, maybe we want to start with Windows and navigation and sort of the interface, maybe. Is that what we want to start? Um, yeah, well, we'll start. There, there's a few key differences, but the, a lot of them are just analog. So I, I found, uh, with my experience uh, a number of years back, the whole thing was just getting your mind around how these things were different and yet the same. So you want to do something, so you go to the place where you used to in Windows, it's like, oh, okay, that's not there. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's just uh, head over to uh, Windows for a second. Um, so here we go. We've got the Windows 7 interface. We've got uh, the desktop layout. We've got icons down the side, your recycle bin, and the, and the start bar and the task bar uh, down the, the bottom, which is your typical Windows experience, no matter which version of Windows you have. You start with the start menu, have the task bar as a way to interact with things. If you want to go somewhere beyond that, you click on your start menu, and you start uh, by clicking on your computer or one of the programs that you want to go to. Right, right? sure, of course. So uh, that's how people are used to interacting with their computers on the Windows side of things. Now, when we move over to Mac, the, the first thing you'll, you'll see in this case is a whole lot of nothing. So the getting started with the whole thing, you might be tempted to say, OK, let's go to the Start menu. And the, the most obvious uh, solution here would be to hit the big Apple. 
and that doesn't really take you where you want to go. This has more configuration options. It's more like a control panel. It's more of a, yeah. a control panel administration section, and it serves as the menu bar. So we're used to on, on Windows having menu on the top of each little window that give you options about that particular window. This is sort of where this appears here. But if you want to get started with a program, there's something called the Finder. Um, and that, we'll get to that in a second, though. But uh, to launch programs, typically, you'll go to the dock. I've got mine hidden, but it's, uh, it's along the side here. And it's got all of these programs in here. And uh, you can launch any of them. So if I want to go to Firefox, I'll click on Firefox, and it'll launch like that. If I want to go to one of these other programs, I'd launch it the same sort of way. Right. If you've got another program that you want to add onto it, you can just drag it into the dock. So right. I can go over and, and launch the Finder. So we can click on Mac HD, uh, which will be your hard drive. Mm -hmm. So this will be the equivalent of your C drive. Mm -hmm. And if you want to launch into it and, and go looking for things, you click on that and it would open up in something so do called I name the drives now instead of like I name my, it's not my C drive, it's just my MacBook Pro drive. Right. So and, and, and if I connect a drive, it becomes my external drive, things like that. Yeah, pretty much. So you've got uh, an old sort of school. It's a legacy thing in Windows where you have the C drive, the yeah. D drive, the E drive. That's just a way for the system to refer to those things internally. But you still name them on top of that, right? So on the Mac, that's hidden. So I've got Mac HD. I don't go to C. Um, you don't have to worry about any of that anymore. All these things will appear uh, in the, uh, the finder on the side. So we've got the, uh, the hard drive here. We've got iDisk, which is my virtual disk. If I had an external uh, drive or a USB key, it would also appear in here as well. Mm -hmm. We've got places, and this would be uh, things on your computer itself, like your desktop, your user account, um, your applications folder. Uh, you can add things into this as well to custom configure it, and we'll, we'll show how to do that probably on a later episode, you know, in, in more advanced tricks. Yeah. Um, so let's say I want to open an application. So I'll open up the applications thing. I'll click on that, and you'll see all of these applications in here. And now if I want to take one of these things, like Audacity, for example, I want to use it on a regular basis, I can either click on it here, double-click to open, or I can just drag it over into the dock. And there it is. It's now in my dock. And to open it, I just click on it, and it starts to run. Hmm. Okay, yeah. So that's, that's one way to deal with this. So okay. you have the dock, and then you've got the menu on the top for all of the menu options related to, uh, so what's the, program in the window that's running. Yeah, okay, got it. And the no, one I don't, that's one thing I didn't like when I had an iMac in 2005, is that you, know, you open a window, but all the stuff that impacts the window is running across the top all the time. I always felt I had to reach with my mouse all the time for it. Right. Do you get used to that for a while or what? You do get used to it. I, I don't even think about it for the most part because you can use keyboard shortcuts, which we'll talk about in a few seconds, to, to do things with the, the program like Quit It or, or Change Focus uh, uh, to a different application. The one nice thing about this thing at the top is as you have things running here, for example, I've got, it says Finder right now, and it's got all of the things related to the Finder, but if I switch over to Firefox, now we've got the menu options available for fi Firefox. So it's context sensitive. So it's not littering the entire desktop with windows plus little submenus on each of those windows related to that. It's all there and it changes as you switch to a different context sensitivity. It's very context right. sensitive. Okay. Okay, got it. okay, so now to get to the Finder, the Finder is sort of the analog of Windows Explorer. So when you wanted to do something in Windows here, you will go over to Start Menu, open up your computer, and now you've got Windows Explorer opens up. So you can go around through here, open up uh, things inside this window. Right. There you go. That's you know, a typical way of uh, interacting with it. On this, it's roughly the same thing, except it's the Finder. Uh, now, the Finder you can get to, at, conveniently enough, without having to hit Start Computer. You can actually, from any screen on here, if you've got a blank bit of desktop, you can click on it and hit Command-N, which is New Window. Which is Amber McMack's fantastic web show. Right, and ex exactly why she chose that. Because, because it's new. It's new. It's new. There you go. So it's uh, to spawn Little a new, piece of trivia there. A new window in any program, whether you're in Firefox or you're in the Finder or whatever, Command N is, is pretty standard. We'll talk about a few more of those shortcuts. So now we opened up a new Finder window basically by clicking on the desktop and hitting Command N, and now we can sort through uh, any of these places that we want to go using the hmm. Finder. Good. And the Finder has, uh, I'm, I'm in column mode right here, which I find the most useful. So you know have different view modes inside Windows? Yeah. Same thing here. You can actually go to icon mode and see everything as icons. You can actually, if you're using Snow Leopard, you can scale the size of the icons. You can go to a details mode, so it lists them all in order and, and nests them in a little, um, little uh, drop-down menu. So you've got a little triangle. If it's pointing to the, to the right, it means there's more. So click on it and it'll drop down. Okay. You have the column mode, and you also have a screen flow mode where you can scroll through in a little icon mode, much like you can do on your iPod Touch, for example. Right. 
So there you go. So that's, that's the Finder. It's just a, a different way of interacting with it, the same way that you would with uh, Windows Explorer. Right. Okay, good. What's next? All right. Well, now that we've got a window open, yeah. there's, there's a couple of things that really frustrate new users to the Mac, and they sometimes frustrate me as well. But uh, it, it's how to deal with windows when they're open in programs. Yeah. So you've got this Finder window here. You want uh, it to go away. Well, you're going to start going up to the top right-hand corner to close it. Well, there's this thing right here, which changes it. And that's not closing the window. Right. You go look over on the left-hand side, and you've got red, yellow, and green. So like a stoplight. Right. Sort of red empty. means go away. Red means close the window. Yellow means? Minimize it. Minimize. I don't, I don't want to see it, but I don't want to get rid of it. Yeah. And uh, green means well. Maximize. It's maximize, but it it, uh, it the trick that I've learned on this it doesn't maximize it to the whole window, but the trick is is if you've got a window that's sort of falling off your screen somehow and you don't know how to deal with it, just click green and it'll automatically Resets. reset it's it reset. to that that window ah. or to your desktop. Well, that's fine. So, so here we go. We've got uh, we've got red. That window goes away. So we're going to go over to Firefox again and uh, and open up a window here. Now here's the really frustrating part for new users. Right. If, you want, if you're done with Firefox, you might think to yourself, I'll just close the window. This is what you do in, in Windows. You click on the go away uh, thing in the top right, and the program closes altogether, unless you have other Firefox windows open. This one, not so much. You see you click it, but it still says Firefox up here. So Firefox is still running in the background, mm -hmm. because it's very Windows-based, oddly enough, for something called Mac. Dope. So you can have no windows open in a program, and the program can still be running in the background. How does that work? Uh, it just keeps the program. Does that mean go away? Go away and just do your thing? Uh, yeah, Bugger just, off? Yeah, clear some space? Get, get rid of the windows, but uh, the program is ready. So you uh, load a program into menu, or memory oh, I see. so that it's ready it's to really go. Cool. It's almost like putting something, minimizing something to the, to this, not even minimizing it, but putting it into like this, the system tray, for example. Mm -hmm. Like it's running in process in the background, but it's right. not, there's no evidence that it's there. Right. So th there's nothing including your desktop, but it's ready to launch instantaneously as opposed to clicking, waiting for a bit for it to reload into memory and all that stuff. Okay. okay. Now, to close a window, or to close a program altogether, rather than just clicking the red, so some programs the red will close the program, but right. most don't. So you go up to the, the menu uh, bar up at the top, right. click the name of the program, which is the program specific bar, rather than the options for the program, and you'll see at the bottom, quit. So you can hit command Q instead as a shortcut to quit any program, sort of the equivalent of Alt F4 mm -hmm. on uh, the Windows program. So you hit quit, and now the program goes away completely, pulls itself out of memory, so you're not using that at all anymore. Hmm. Okay, so the program's shut down completely. The program is okay. shut down. Now, we, we've, we've kind of cranked through some, some, a lot of time here going through some basics, so mm -hmm. give, give me like the four key things so we can wrap up these last few minutes mm -hmm. on what I should care about. Uh, well, those things are, are, are pretty much it. Uh, just wanted to cover a couple more tips here. Uh, the, the keyboard tricks. So if you're using keyboard shortcuts, and I think this will save you a lot of time as a power user and any other power user that's going to it. Yeah. Uh, anything that you do on Windows typically transfers over to the Mac barely well. So if you hit Control-C, Control-Z, Control-V for, say, copy, cut, paste, all of those things are undo, it works on Mac with one thing uh, that's slightly changed. Instead of using Control, you hit Command instead. OK. Right? Yeah. So most of those will transfer over. There's a few other things that are Control or Command Q to quit a program, Command W to minimize the window. And that's the equivalent of Alt F4 and Control F4. OK. Good. Right? Um, the other thing that you want to do to configure your machine is in the uh, window side of the equation, you'll go over to Start Menu and Control Panel. This is where you do all of the stuff that you want to do with your relating to your machine. Uh, on the Macintosh side of the thing, you go to the Apple Menu. And this is where we go to the Apple Menu and click on System Preferences. And now that opens up a very similar kind of panel with a bunch of icons. Is that like Control Panel? It is the Control oh, Panel, okay. but it's called System Preferences. Right. And, and I said that's how you Why get Why can they it. call it Control Panel? Um, because. It would have been easier for me. With, when you're with Apple, you have to think different. Oh, that's right. Think Not think different. differently, which would have been grammatically correct, but they think different. OK. Anyways, so there, there's that. We already talked briefly about drive management uh, when you have it. Uh, Where's my there. system tray? Your system tray. Oh, your system tray. You don't have a system tray on this What? One. I can't but live without my system tray. Your system tray does have an equivalent on this as well. Yeah. 
So in the system tray, and we'll go back over here, you'll see on the bottom right-hand corner, you've got all these little icons that explain what's going on. So you've got your speaker icon, for example, whether you're on batteries, yeah. um, maybe you're a wireless network. It's like system status. Is... Sy system status. A bunch of yeah. programs can install into the system tray and give you notifications yeah. and how to things, or you can go down to it and click on something and, and automatically configure it. I think actually the official, Windows official title is notification tray or something. Notification, like yeah. I know it used to be system tray. Uh, they keep changing their minds. Whatever it is called, that's where so it is. So what does Apple call it? Uh, menu bar. We haven't been able to figure out an exact name for this, but with... Uh, with is, is the stuff up at the right-hand corner? Stuff up at the right-hand corner. Tray. So there's uh, basically the menu bar goes all the way across. That all changes depending on which program you're in. You see I changed to Finder, but all of this stuff on the right-hand side stays the same. So I've got Spotlight, which is a nice easy way to find things on your... That's oh, like Search? It's like Search. Context sensitive. Um, we've got the time and date, your username if you've uh, activated that. Here's your uh, wireless settings. But time stood still in the Apple world. It does. So why would you need the time and date? <laughs> there you go. And last thing, we mentioned Spotlight, and we'll, we'll go back over to, uh, to Windows again really quickly. So with the Windows 7, to search for something, you go into there and start searching in the search window. So Windows, and it'll start bringing up stuff over there. Yeah. On the Mac side of the equation, it's very much the same sort of concept, but you click on the window up here, and you start typing into that uh, spotlight window after clicking, it's the magnifying glass. Yeah. And it starts bringing it down to, to show a greater detail of all the things that it found. You click on the show all and it brings up a whole window and, and everything comes up in there. It searches through your email messages, it searches through your programs, all the documents, et cetera. Or, and this is the nice thing about it, any finder window that opens up, you'll notice at the top there's a, there's a spotlight bar here that you can start typing into any window. And you can do this in your mail application, hmm. everything. So any, any time you want to search for something, start typing there. That's very cool. And so that's that. And the last thing we're going to mention but not go into today is gestures. So this applies to the MacBooks and the MacBook Pros, not so much the iMac, which is the other desktop uh, consumer yeah. computer. Um, it, it, on the trackpad here, there's different ways of dealing with things. Uh, that uh, you don't deal with on a, on a Windows machine. Ways to use three fingers, four fingers, two fingers, gesturing on the trackpad, one all finger? sorts of things. Yeah, you can use one finger if you really, really <laughs> want. So, but we'll, we'll talk about that in yeah, a later time because that's a little bit more advanced. I have a lot to learn here, apparently. You do. And, uh, but thank you for that, Prime Minister. Very good. Um, we'll continue to cover our uh, switching to the Mac and follow my trials and tribulations. And I'm going to be really hard on Apple as we go through, but I will give them kudos as they occur as well. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway, let's take a break. And when we come back, we have uh, a clip of the week and of course your viewer photos as well. That's after this. Well, if you want to follow along with my trials and tribu tribulations in this adventure, um, you know, certainly, you know, you, we're going to do cover all kinds of things around this over the next few weeks or so, and imagine months as well. But if you want to get started right away, and I think I'm going to do this after the show is over, is uh, check out Doc Callahan's 10-part series on switching to the Mac. He did it for us a little while back on Butterscotch.com, and it's a really great primer on teaching you some fundamentals. So let's uh, have a look of a clip at that, and then when we come back, picture time. Welcome on deck, I'm Matt Harris. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman. Welcome to the A-List. Hi, welcome to Miss Download. So here's the dock down here. The dock is a place where you can put icons for the programs you use most so you can access them quickly. Now the dock is equivalent to the quick launch bar in Windows. And so for your reference, here's a Windows virtual machine and here's the quick launch bar down here. The dock is a place where I put icons for programs I use all the time like Firefox. But at the same time, the dock holds icons for programs that are currently running. Now you can see the string of programs here all have like little lights underneath them. And the lights indicate that the program's running, even though it's not visible. So I'm wondering if people are going to start to send in pictures of, you know, lab rats on Macs and eliminate the whole Windows world. I doubt it. Yeah, I know. I doubt it, too. But anyway. All right. So what, who do we have this week? Well, we have uh, two pictures for you today. First up, we have a, well, you wondered about on the Mac. Well, people have been sending pictures of lab rats running on other things, like yes. their phones and whatnot. And yeah, you got yeah. actually one. Uh, Brian is uh, showing us running on the PS3. So that's hey. down over in the corner there. So he's running us uh, from that. Love it. Very and good. This is a little bit recursive here. So I'll, I'll do this while pointing to that. And if someone wants to show this uh, freeze frame, on their shot, then we'll just see how far back we can get ourselves into there. <laughs> Anyways, 
So, there you go. Nice so thank you, Brian, for sending that along. And Merry Christmas, Brian. Was Merry it Brian Christmas. or Ryan? Brian. Brian. And uh, this is Brian's cat. Uh, also, Merry Christmas to the cat. Merry Christmas to the cat. I'm What's not the sure. cat's name? Uh, Red Bow Ington or something. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Red Send Bowington. us the names of your cats and siblings and relatives. And yes, and, why are you, and we don't know where Brian lives. No, not no. 100%. So disappointed. Oh, well. He doesn't win a MacBook Pro. He could have. <laughs> now you know. Andy could give away his MacBook Pro at any time How if he gets frustrated <laughs> enough. <laughs> That's right. All right, good. Okay, don't forget. If you send us pictures, when you send us pictures, or you want to send us comments and ideas for shows, please email us at Get a Mac. It's something that all the cool kids are doing, especially the coolest kid of all, Andy Walker at labrats.tv. <laughs> That's so true. And if you type that in, it'll go directly to me, I promise. Uh, but more simply, if you have a, you know, tired fingers. What kind of fingers? Tired fingers. Tired fingers. All right. Because you've been too much gest Mac gesturing. Mac gesturing. What would you it's, email? It's easy. They uh, want to know the email address, the short email address, Sean. Feedback at labrats.tv. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> All right, good. All right, don't forget, hop on over to butterscotch.com. We have loads and loads of content. We have more than 2,000 pieces of video there now, uh, more than uh, 200 pieces of uh, video from the Lab Rat series, uh, lots of tutorials, all kinds of stuff. So make sure you yeah, get on over there. Well, thank you for uh, tuning in this week and watching me slowly mutate into an Apple fanboy. Not. Uh, my name's Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Apple, yay! Are you ready? Is, uh, is his mic like, I notice his like neck is hitting his mic. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. So no. it's not too... We can roll forward a little bit like yeah. that.